In this section we're looking at mixing greens. And quite often people ask me how to mix good greens and that's quite a difficult question to answer because it depends what kind of green you want to achieve. We looked at the beginning at the colour circle and as we talked about if you take yellow and add blue it tells you that you get green. That's quite a simplistic way of thinking about colour. But a better question for a painter really is what kind of green will you make by mixing this yellow with this blue? So here I've put out a grid with all of the colours that I have in blue along the top, plus black, which I talked about as a possible colour for mixing green. And that's really because black paint often has quite a bit of blue pigment in it. And down the left hand side I've put my yellows. And what I've tried to do on the palette is to organise them by how warm or cool each colour is. If you remember at the beginning I talked about the fact that brown is made by mixing the three primaries, yellow, blue and red. And so if you're mixing a yellow and blue and your yellow has quite a bit of red in it and your blue has quite a bit of red in it, you risk getting a muddy colour by making a brown. So if you want a vibrant green, you need to pick a yellow that's closer to a green and a blue that's closer to a green, so cooler colours. Now you can see some examples here in my grid. So first of all I started with blue, violet and ochre and mixed them together. And you can see there's so much red in each of these colours that I really just get a brown. Whereas with the lemon yellow, which is this one, and cerulean blue, this one, they're both quite cool colours and I can get some lovely vibrant greens with these. With the black, when I picked the cadmium yellow, which is this one, I get a much more olive green. And when I pick the lemon yellow, again, I get a slightly more vibrant green. And when I start with a pale lemon yellow, which is this colour here, and add black, I get almost a grey. And there's a point here, which is that if you want to achieve a really vibrant colour with an intense hue, you can't start with two colours that have low saturation because one and one is never going to give you ten. So I've done a few examples here, but let's do some more. So up here, let's try ochre, which is quite a reddish yellow, almost a brown. And I'll add some thalo to it, which is a very cool blue. And I don't need very much of the darker pigment at all because it's very intense and a little bit goes a long way. So I'm just going to start with a touch and I can add a bit more if I want to. And that gives me a very muted green. So a good point to remember if you do only have very bright yellows and blues in your palette and you want to make a more muted green, the colour to add is red because that's what's going to lean it more towards brown and give it a warmer bias. Add a bit more of my farlo. And then some white into that to see what happens if I make it a lighter colour. And a bit more yellow. And this is, again is more of a brown because the yellow is overwhelming the coolness of the thalo blue. So 
So next along my grid I have teal, which is this colour here, which is almost a green itself. So I would imagine if I mix this with a lemon yellow, I will have a very vibrant colour green. So let's try that. that's almost fluorescent, a really vibrant green colour. And a very lovely jade type green. But because the teal is quite light to begin with, this is probably about as dark as I can get with this mixture. Whereas with the Salo, which is a darker blue to begin with, I can get a really nice dark blue-green, which would be great for something like spruce trees. And now ultramarine and lemon yellow together. Ultramarine being a fairly dark blue, but also with a little bit of red in it. Gives me quite a nice blue-green, but the more of the yellow that I add, the more acid it starts to look. Because I'm moving the colour bias more towards the cool side of the colour wheel 